everyone. Welcome back to another video. My name is Piyush Sajdeva and in this video, I will walk you through the process of setting up an Azure function that sends email notifications for new file uploads in your Azure blob storage. I will cover everything from creating an Azure function to integration and to setting up necessary triggers. By the end of this video, you will have a reliable and effective solution for monitoring your Azure blob storage in real time. If you want to know how to stream your AKS logs to Azure blob storage, I have created a separate video for that. So make sure to check that out before this video. I will put the link in the description section and in the title bar up here. So without waiting any further, let's jump into it. So in the previous video, we had an Azure AKS cluster and then we were able to stream the logs from AKS to Azure blob storage. Right, this is your blob and we used a tool called vector to do that. So there was a pod created. This much of setup is done. We have our logs in the Azure blob storage. Now the next part is we would somehow wants to create a trigger as soon as so let's say there is something that it that should watch the trigger on this Azure blob storage so that as soon as there is a new upload in the blob, there is an email notification sent out to the user immediately. So how would you do that? You use a Azure function, right? An Azure function that would watch this Azure blob, right? There'll be a blob trigger created for that. Then it will use a product called SendGrid to trigger the email. So this is how it will be done. Azure function will watch this Azure blob storage, which is a trigger. And as soon as it finds the change, it will inform SendGrid to trigger the email to the user and your user will receive the email, right? So let's see how we can set this up. I'm inside my Azure portal, as you can see. So I look for Azure function. I'll click on that and I'll basically create a new function. Hit create. And then it will ask me a few details such as my subscription resource group name. So let's just put in. I'll use an existing resource group for this demo, which is huge RG, which is what I created for my previous video. I'll use the same one. I'll give this function app a unique name. Check email notifications. Okay, this is available. And then I use the runtime as .NET version six and you can choose the region of your choice. After that, you click on next hosting plan. I'll use a storage account. Hit networking and you can enable or disable your public access. So I'll just keep it default for now. Then monitoring. So if I want to check the logs triggered by this uh, Azure function in case there is any failure. So I'll just keep it enabled. And I'll use a new app inside account for that. Then next deployment, I'll just keep it default. Rest everything is default and I'll review the changes. Once it is validated, I'll review all the changes over here and everything else looks good. I'll click on create. So this will create an Azure function app. Now the next part is to create the Azure function that will do the actual work. All right. So the deployment is completed. Now let's go to the resource. And go to functions. Click on create to create a new function. Okay. Keep this option as default development environment is develop in portal. Keep this as default. Then the next is use your template for your trigger. So I'll use the Azure blob storage trigger this one and then go down. Now it will ask you to give this function a name. Let's keep it default blob trigger one. And over here, you specify the path where Azure function will watch for the files. So for us, it will be AKS logs and everything inside that container. So it will watch for all the subdirectories as well. So if you have any specific requirement, like just watch the file with extension dot log, then you can specify like this over here. Okay. For now, I'll just keep it uh, the way it is. 
And over here, you provide your storage account connection details. So I'll just uh, use the storage account that I have. And I'll click on new for that. And my storage account name was storage Piyush 1012. So this is what I'll use. And it will import the connection string into that. So I'll click OK and hit create. Okay, let's see if it is provisioned yet. Okay, it is completed. Now go inside that, click on code and test. It will show you this default code generated for you. So I'll just replace it with mine. And this is what you see now. This will be the subject of the message. Files have been updated and or added to the blob and then the name of the file. Let's save this. Once you have saved it, now let's go to the integration section. And here we have to configure our triggers as well as output. So trigger is already there. It's when we selected our template, it was updated. Then this is the function code. And here is our output field, which is blank as of now. So let's add the output. All right, binding type should be send grid. So I'll select the send grid as output. You can use any of these available outputs, right? So I'll choose send grid. And then message parameter name, just keep it default. Then the send grid API key app setting. So this will be the API key generated within the send grid. So for that, let's open this uh, portal in a new tab. And I'll just uh, go ahead and search for a resource in the marketplace called SendGrid. Twilio SendGrid. So this is what we need. Basically it's a SaaS model based on the subscription. So I'll choose my resource group. I'll use the same resource group, PushRG, and then name of the service, test SendGrid 02. Okay, and then this is the plan. So for now I'm using the free plan, which is giving me 100 uh, free emails per day, right? And it doesn't have any costs associated with it. Now let's click on review plus subscribe. Okay, comes in condition, accepted. Um, enter your email address, your primary phone number if you want, and then hit subscribe. Once you do that, you have to click over here, configure account now, but I have already configured the account. So it will just ask you a few base, basic details about yourself and then you can verify your email. Right? So I've already done this step. That's why it's not showing me, but uh, you have to do this step if you are doing it for the first time. Once that is done, you go to app.sendgrid.com. I'll just log in with the credential that I've already set up. And it has texted me a code. So let's put in there five, seven, six, five, four, three. Okay, it continue. And on the left side, you see, so this is your dashboard. And on the left side, you'll see a button called that setting. So let's go to setting and API keys. So we will be generating a new API key. So hit over here on the right side, create API key and give it a name, test demo key, let's say, and create and view. Copy this key because it will be generated for the first time and it will be gone after that. So just make sure to copy it and save it somewhere safe. So click on done once that is done. Now go back to our Azure portal where we were configuring the output in the Azure function. So over here in the SendGrid API key app setting, create a new setting, call it SendGrid API key okay, and put the value of what we have copied from the API key generated, click OK. Enter the two address, let's put my address and from address, whatever I have configured in the send grid. And then a message subject, let's say blob added or updated. 
and message text can leave this as blank because we have already specified that in our code. So that can be left blank. So click OK once you do that. Right, so this is done. Now let's see if it worked or not. So I'll go to my Azure storage account. Right. And inside containers. Yes, logs. And over here, I'll upload a new file. and hit upload. Okay, so once that is done, once your function is triggered and there is no issues with that, you will receive an email, something similar to this. And with the subject as blob added or updated and the message as file has been updated or added to the blob with the file name. All right, so that's it basically. So you can make your changes in your code as per your convenience. You can use the coding choice as per your convenience. And uh, that's it. So I hope uh, this video was somewhat beneficial to you and you have learned something out of it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, colleagues, and to whoever you think could be valuable to. I will see you soon in the next video. Till then, take care of yourself. Thank you so much for watching.